Welcome to a quick overview of our Module 1 Web and Portfolio Design Checkpoint. I'm using this as a grading tool for your Module 1 grade. It is worth 40% of your overall grade. It's on a 40 point scale so that there's an easier correlation between this project and the grade you get in the grade book. The thing that you need to know when you're looking at this checklist is that you have not learned how to do all of these pieces and that's fine you will get there before you have to turn this in some of the things that you have uh, looked at or played with are things like um, widgets and menus you have certainly been working on your weekly exercises so that's moving along and <clears throat> you have used HTML tags and Google fonts you have not gotten into a lot of graphics and graphic issues. So these are things you haven't really learned how to do yet. I'm going to, in this tutorial, focus a little bit on the HTML and Google fonts so you get a sense of what I'm looking for there. To get started, I've got a sample des design site going here. And in this particular case, I have gone ahead and formatted these as an H1 and H3 and then the rest of this is just a regular paragraph. So when we're talking about visual design and several of the articles that you have read hopefully have brought home to you the idea that while instructional design, the content is certainly the most important part, but if the visual components of the site are not such that they support the learning, then you're going to distract your learners and they won't get very far or they certainly may not see the value or benefit of your site if they can't get past the packaging or the visuals. So super important that you apply a couple of basic design themes or theories to your content. In this particular case, I um, want to point out that this, the module one and the module two, are the things that are the big headers on this page. So in terms of promoting the eye to flow to the bigger headers they should be visually distinct from everything else on the page so that we know that there are two chunks in addition to that these week one week two week three etc these pieces will also be different in the fact that they are subheadings they should be somewhere between the paragraph content here and the h1 content up here so I'm going to go ahead and take a look here. Here's my page, and indeed I've got this as an H1, an H3, and a general paragraph. Now, you have learned how to install the Google Font plugin, and I'm going to pop over there. Now, I will tell you that I have played with these fonts forever. So I already know which fonts I'm going to choose, but it can take some time to come up with font combinations that you really like. The other issue is that this is probably the most rudimentary way to play with fonts within a WordPress site. There are multiple ways to, to do this. Um, and I'm just showing you one particular easy way. I'm going to make spicy rice my H1 tag and save that. I'll go ahead and take a quick look at my results. Reload that. And here it is. This has a bit of a whimsical feel to it, but it's certainly bold and noticeable against everything else on the page, which is really what my objective is. And I'm going to come over here and choose my second font as something called Over the Rainbow. And again, you, you could spend hours trying to figure out what these fonts look like. I'm going to make that an H3 because I know that I have that on the page. Now, notice in my particular case, I'm not even going to bother to try to define a, a generic paragraph. And you don't need to either. Mainly because the paragraphs should be something straightforward to begin with, right? This is probably um, okay. I might want to play with it a little bit more and try to find something that was either a little bit bigger here or a little bit smaller there. Um, they would both work. So it's important to just make it work with whatever combinations you need. I do very want to very quickly want to go into something that would not work. And let me see if I can find a couple of those really quickly. Um, I'm thinking Aquafina maybe. Aquafina. 
course, I probably can't find it yet. Oh, Alex Brush is one that um, while it could work under certain circumstances, let me go ahead and refresh this. It tends to be a little bit too decorative for most people. It's also going to run on the smaller side. So you'd have a harder time finding a font that would work as a subtext up against it. And if this went any smaller, quite frankly, then it would become more unusable. So be very careful about your decorative fonts. Decorative fonts are a lot of fun to play with, but they oftentimes can be very tricky to get in there. Let me go ahead and show you this. This is the Aquafina. And again, um, can be very, very stylistic, can be a lot of fun, but can be very challenging for end users to read. So please be careful of that. I'm going to stop this video currently and I will jump back in here in a moment in a couple of other instructional design module one checkpoint issues. See you in a bit.